Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Tombstone Tourist. This week I'm once again back on the third floor of the Cross Mausoleum here at Woodlawn Memorial Park. In an earlier video from here I visited the final resting place of Felice and Boudreaux Bryan and Grand Old Opry star Ernie Ashworth. This week I'm going to walk just a short distance down to West Hall and visit a man who may have been short in stature but was a giant in country music. Here, we're going to find the final resting place of the man known far and wide as Tater, Little Jimmy Dickens. James Cecil Dickens was born on December 19, 1920 in Bolt, West Virginia. As a teenager, Jimmy began his career in country music when he began performing on WJLS radio in Beckley, West Virginia. Jimmy enjoyed performing more than he did going to school, so he quit school and began performing full-time as Jimmy the Kid. Jimmy was on the small side, standing only 4 foot 11 inches tall, and eventually decided to abandon Jimmy the Kid and start calling himself simply Little Jimmy Dickens. In 1948, Little Jimmy was performing in Saginaw, Michigan. Roy Acuff heard him and was immediately struck by his big voice and commanding stage presence. A short time later, Mr. Acuff introduced Jimmy to an executive with Columbia Records and the management of the Grand Ole Opry. The Opry management liked him so much that in August of 1948, Little Jimmy Dickens became a full-time member of the Grand Ole Opry cast. A few weeks later, Jimmy signed with Columbia Records where he recorded a number of novelty songs that became hits. Songs like Out Behind the Barn, Sleeping at the Foot of the Bed, I'm Little But I'm Loud, and Take an Old Cold Tater and Wait. As a result of Take an Old Cold Tater and Wait, Hank Williams began calling little Jimmy Tater and started introducing him that way on the Grand Ole Opry. The name stuck and little Jimmy Dickens became Tater. Hank Williams and Little Jimmy were great friends, and one night when the pair was flying back to Nashville, Jimmy told Hank that he needed a hit. It took Hank only 20 minutes to write a song that he gave to Jimmy. However, a week later, before Jimmy could record it, Hank Williams stepped into the recording studio and recorded Hey Good Lookin'. When Jimmy asked Hank about it later, Williams told him that that song's too good for you. Jimmy took it all in stride and replied, much obliged, Hiram. In 1965, little Jimmy released, May the Bird of Paradise Fly Up Your Nose. It turned out to be his only number one hit. His popularity never waned and Throughout his career, he was a frequent guest on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson while appearing in a number of music videos with his friends Hank Williams Jr., fellow West Virginian Brad Paisley. When Little Jimmy retired from touring, he continued to make regular appearances on the Opry, where he would often introduce himself as, I'm Little Jimmy Dickens, or Willie Nelson after taxes. With the death of Hank Lachlan in 2009, Little Jimmy became the oldest living member of the Grand Ole Opry, and he would continue to appear on the Opry right up until his death. On December 20th, 2014, Little Jimmy would make what would be his final Grand Ole Opry appearance. Five days later, on Christmas Day, 2014, Tater suffered a stroke. He passed away just a few days later, on January 2nd, 2015, little Jimmy Dickens was 94 years old. In a career that spanned almost 70 years, little Jimmy Dickens was one of country music's most beloved people. No one ever had anything bad to say about the little man with the big personality who was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1983.
Resting in the crypt adjacent to little Jimmy is gospel singer and songwriter Dottie Rambo. Dottie Rambo was born on March 2, 1934 in Madisonville, Missouri. When she was only eight years old, Dottie began writing songs while sitting on a creek bank near her home. By the age of 10, Dottie was helping support her family by singing and playing country music on a local radio station. Dottie was only 16 years old when she met and married Buck Rambo, who she had met at a revival meeting. Dottie began writing gospel songs and performing with Buck at revival services. Over the years, Dottie devoted her life to writing gospel music. While she was a talented singer in her own right, her first love was writing gospel songs. During her career, it is believed that she wrote more than 2,500 songs, including He Looked Beyond My Fault and Saw My Need, we shall behold him, and I'll go to the rock. During her career, Dottie Rambo received a number of awards, including being inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame, the Southern Gospel Hall of Fame, the Kentucky Music Hall of Fame, and the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. She was also recognized by the Christian Country Music Association as the Songwriter of the Century. Dottie Rambo died at the age of 74 on March 11, 2008, when her tour bus crashed near Mount Vernon, Missouri. Resting here in the same room with little Jimmy and Dottie Rambo is a man who had one of the smoothest voices in country music, Jim Ed Brown. Jim Ed Brown was born in Sparkman, Arkansas on April 1, 1934. Early in his life, Jim Ed and his sisters, Maxine and Bonnie, moved with their parents to Pine Bluff, Arkansas, where they began singing in church and at local events. In 1954, Jim Ed and Maxine signed a recording contract and began performing and recording as a duet. The pair gained national attention when they appeared on the Ernest Tubb radio show performed a humorous song called Looking Back to See. Jim Ed once said he didn't think the song would do much and after appearing on the Ernest Tubb show the song took off and became a top 10 hit. A year later Jim Ed and Maxine were again joined by their sister Bonnie and began performing on the Louisiana Hayride as the Browns. At the end of 1955 the Browns were also performing the Ozark Jubilee where they had another top 10 hit called Here Today, Gone Tomorrow. The Browns followed Here Today, Gone Tomorrow with two more major hits in 1956 with I'll Take a Chance and I Hear the Bluebird Sing. Then in 1959, the Browns recorded their biggest hit called The Three Bells. The song reached number one in both the pop and country charts. The Browns were one of country music's most popular acts and in 1963, they joined the Grand Ole Opry. They remained members of the Grand Ole Opry until 1967, when the group decided to disband for various personal reasons. Jim Ed embarked on a solo career and soon recorded his first solo hit called Papa Top Again, which topped out at number three on the country charts and became his signature song. In 1976, Jim Ed began performing and recording with Helen Cornelius. Together, the pair recorded several popular songs, including their number one hit, I Don't Want to Marry You. Jim Ed's smooth voice and popularity around Nashville led him to host a number of popular TV shows, including Nashville on the Road, where he was joined by country comedian Jerry Clower. Jim Ed Brown joined the Grand Ole Opry with his sisters in 1963, and even after the group went their separate ways, Jim Ed remained an Opry member for the rest of his life. In September of 2014, Jim Ed announced that he'd been diagnosed with lung cancer and was receiving treatment. The cancer went into a brief remission. 
In March of 2015, it was announced that Jim Ed Brown would be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. A few weeks later, Jim Ed announced that his cancer had returned. Jim Ed Brown passed away at the age of 81 on June the 11th, 2015. Well, this brings me to the end of another video. If you have any memories of Little Jimmy, Jim Ed Brown, or Dottie Rambo, or any of the people that we visit in these videos, I hope you'll share them with us in the comments. If this is your first time here, I hope you'll consider ringing that bell and subscribing. And if you're already a subscriber, I thank you for your support. Now, until next time, please remember, life is a wonderful journey. Be sure to take time and enjoy it. And I'll see you down the road. So long, everyone.